You can't claim now the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam copied the Bible, because that means he knew what was right, left what was wrong, and took what was correct. And this is an impossibility. It's claiming that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam had a library of Alexandrian magnitude. <laughs> yeah, these guys are crazy, man. Do you see? So there's a historical miracle here. Also, we have a scientific miracle. We know in Surah Mu'minun, chapter 23, verse 12 to 15. The Qur'an mentions eight meaningful points about the process of embryology. And we've just completed a research paper on this, updating the 1980s and 1990 argument that many of our ulama, many of our du'at have developed. And what's very interesting, and let's take a few words for example. Let's take the word nutfa. Allah mentions the word nutfa. Now this is an amazing word. According to Lisan al-Arab, the classical dictionary, and the Western academic dictionary, Lane's lexicon, Nutfa has multi-layered meanings. It means a single entity from a greater group of its kind. For example, a, a single sperm amongst many sperm, or a female egg amongst many eggs in the ovaries. It also means a drop of fluid. It also means, according to the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad wasallam, in a hadith, he says, a Nutfa is from the male and from the female. Think about this. And also in Surah Al-Hajj, the Qur'an also mentions that the nutfa is a mixed substance. So what do we know today in modern embryology? This is the process of fertilization. Something that you can't see with the naked eye. The process of fertilization requires a single entity from the mother, a single entity from the father, a sperm and an ovum, and they're mixed together, just like what the Qur'an says, they're mixed together, and also, they have to be contained in a fluid. And we know nutfa also means a drop of fluid. The sperm has to be contained in semen, and the ovum has to be contained in oviductal secretions. Sounds like a big word, but it's just fluid. Yeah? Now how could the Prophet ﷺ guess this or know this? Some people claim he copied the Greek physicians, Aristotle, Galen, Hippocrates. But this is a fallacy, this is so wrong. Because Galen, he thought that only the sperm had all the genetic material. But according to the Sunnah, we know the genetic material comes from the male and the female. Because the Prophet questioned someone saying, how else do children res resemble their mothers? Indicating the nutfa of the woman is also having a part to play in the genetic material of the human Baby, the development of the human embryo. Also, Aristotle had a very bizarre view. He said that fertilization occurs with the sperm and menstrual fluid, blood, which is not a scientific view. And the Quran doesn't mention menstrual fluid, which is haith in Arabic, it mentions nutfa. So, the, if the Quran is so accurate in line with modern science, and it couldn't have copied the knowledge of the time, which is Aristotle and Galen, so where did it come from, people? This is why Sheikh Muhar Ali, Rahimullah, he mentions something amazing. He says the Quran is not dependent on the 7th century with regards to science. It transcends time. And look what we see just by the use of the word nutfa. Amazing. Amazing. So what we've done, we could show that the Quran is from the divine, or we can't explain it naturally, it must come from the supernatural, and it proves the existence of the supernatural based upon the linguistic miracle, the historical miracle, and the scientific miracle.